Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're looking at the top 11 vocal compression tips. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Edit first for less compression. If you're trying to use less overall compression, probably because you want a cleaner sounding vocal, use clip gain on the vocal first. Although time consuming, find all aspects that are too quiet or too loud, isolate them, and then alter their respective gains accordingly. Now keep in mind that some frequencies, even when at a lower level, will sound as loud or louder than ones at a higher level, so you'll need to use your ear. Let's listen to a before and after of clip gain being applied. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Capture all of the vocal. Certain compressor settings are great for getting that sought after upfront and highly detailed sound. To accomplish this, you'll need to capture all of the vocal with your compressor. Use the quickest possible attack, a 50 millisecond release while enabling about two milliseconds of look ahead and auto makeup gain. This way the compressor can read and be triggered by the full signal, then amplify the compressed signal to match its original level, bringing quieter parts of the vocal to the forefront. Let's listen and notice how close the vocals sound. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. It helps us bring you more videos. Emphasize 2 kilohertz into compression. Although the title of this chapter says 2 kilohertz, it's more like find the vocal's harmonic that's around 2 kilohertz and boost that with a bell filter by 3 to 5 dB. Then insert a compressor and compress the vocal as you normally would, or maybe how we did in the previous chapter. By driving this frequency into the compressor, it works a little harder on it, causing a unique timbre and emphasizing what makes the vocal cut through the mix. Let's listen and notice how the vocal's presence increases. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Does saturation compress? In short, yes, saturation causes soft knee downward compression at higher input levels and reduces the dynamic range by introducing harmonics. Different saturation types have different compression knees, ratios, and harmonic formations, making saturation a truly complex effect with a lot of variables to consider. For example, tape saturation compresses significantly more than tube saturation, whereas transistor saturation mildly compresses, but then compresses heavily at higher levels. Let's listen to saturation at higher levels on a vocal and see if we notice compression. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Saturation versus compression for vocals. Although there's no reason that you can't use both, it helps to know what's different about how saturation compresses and how a typical compressor compresses. The primary difference is that saturation will compress different frequencies to varying degrees, whereas a compressor will compress the same for all frequencies. For example, a compressor will attenuate 200 Hz and say 10 kHz the same amount, unless it's an optical compressor, but a saturator may compress the lows more and highs less, or vice versa, depending on the saturator type. Let's isolate the lows and highs and saturate them with the same settings to see if we notice a subtle difference in the amount of compression. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Try reverse saturation. So I'll admit that I just made up this term, but it's worth noting that a typical saturator introduces harmonics way before it begins to introduce downward compression. If we reverse the process, we could use a compressor to attenuate the signal and then introduce the harmonics with a distortion plugin. As a result, harmonics form off of the dynamically controlled signal and subsequently aren't subjected to further compression, resulting in a compressed vocal, but with a unique timbre. Let's take a listen to it. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late. So late. Expert vocal dynamic control. Earlier, we discussed how saturation compresses different frequencies to varying degrees, which arguably gives it a much more complex sound. But 
what if we could achieve this while being able to exercise a lot more control over the signal? To do this, I'll first need to duplicate my vocal. Then I'll place an EQ on each vocal track, with one isolating the lows and the other isolating the highs, both set to low latency linear phase to retain their timing. Then I'll compress the lows one way and the highs another, letting me determine how much each range is compressed, the overall timbre of the compression, and more. Granted, you could do this with a multiband compressor, but many lack the complex settings a standalone compressor would have. Let's take a listen to this and consider how it could be used both practically and creatively. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. If you're enjoying the channel, join the community with the link in the description. Upward and downward compression. We've discussed downward compression a lot, but upward compression is just as useful when mixing and compressing vocals. I've covered it before, but an upward compressor is going to capture quieter details, maybe around 20 to 30 dB below the peak, and amplify them while leaving the signal's peaks unaffected. If we combine upward and downward compression, we control the dynamics of the vocal from both directions. Let's take a listen and notice how the vocal sounds full and impressive. Tell me why you only call so late. So late. Tell me why you only call so late. So late. Peak, then optical compression. Another good compression pair for vocals is peak down compression and then peak down optical compression. The first compressor is going to have quick settings similar to those described in chapter 2. Then an optical compressor will smooth the remaining dynamics with its dual timed and frequency specific release. Combined, they create an upfront and controlled vocal, but with a smooth and enjoyable sound. Let's take a listen to it. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Short reverb as compression. Although this doesn't seem right, short reverb can be seen as a form of upward compression since we'll perceive these short reflections as coming from one sound source. With that in mind, Let's use very short reverb, lower the pre-delay, and isolate the reflections to the mids. With it blended in, we'll notice that the vocal sounds thicker and fuller. Now this is due to the added low level content and the reduced dynamic range caused by the newly added reflections. Let's take a listen to it. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Compress Temporal Effects A vocal's temporal effects typically include reverb, delay, and maybe chorusing and modulation effects. As we covered, short reflections reduce the dynamic range by adding in low-level content that's perceived as coming from the original source. If we compress these reflections, we enhance the effect. To show this, let's set up a send on which we'll use a short reverb followed by a compressor with auto makeup gain. Then we'll blend in the effect and notice how these compressed reflections really make the vocal sound thick. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. Tell me why you only call so late, so late. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.